chapter 46. So Israel set out with all that he had, and he came to Beersheba, and he doesn't forget to offer sacrifices to God there. He didn't just get so excited by what he was going to get, the prosperity and honor, that his son was now the top man almost in the world, that he forgot about God. He'd been broken at Peniel, so he bows before God and makes a sacrifice to him. And when God sees that, God sees that a man makes time for him, then God makes time for that man also. If you make time for God, God will make time for you. And God speaks to him. Very often God doesn't speak to many people because they don't make time for him. And God spoke to Israel in a vision and said, Jacob, Jacob. We saw that in an earlier study. This is one of the seven places in the Bible where you have this double call, like Abraham, Abraham. Jacob, Jacob, Samuel, Samuel, like that. Jacob, Jacob, and he said, here I am. And he said, I am God. Go down, don't be afraid to go down to Egypt. I'll make you a great nation. I will go down with you to Egypt. The important thing, brothers and sisters, is not whether we go to Egypt or whether we live where we are. The important thing is that God can say to us, I will go with you where you are going. Then we are all right. It is not that such and such a place is spiritual or such and such a place is not spiritual. The thing is for God to go down with us in all our movements. And that's what Jacob wanted to be sure of. Lord, years ago my grandfather went to Egypt and he got into problems. He brought back an Egyptian maid and got a son through her called Ishmael that caused problems. And you told my father Isaac not to go to Egypt when there was a famine. You remember that? We studied that in Genesis 26. Now what shall I do? God says go. God's will for another person is not God's will for you. He may tell one person not to go somewhere, he may tell you to go. Each of us need to have an individual contact with God. The important thing is that we know that God is with us in our movement. And so he takes his children, the sons of Israel, they carried their father Jacob and their little ones and their wives. They took their livestock and their property and came to Egypt. His sons and his grandsons with him, his daughters and his granddaughters. When it says his daughters, we don't really know whether it refers to the, whether Dina had other sisters or whether it's referring to his granddaughters and his daughters. But anyway, they all came down and the sons, the, there's a list given here of all the grandchildren of Jacob. And this is where we see that Benjamin, verse 21, was, um, he had ten children. He was not really a baby or a small boy at that time. He must have been past his mid-thirties. And these are the sons of, all the other sons of all the children of Jacob. Verse 26. All the persons belonging to Jacob who came to Egypt, his direct descendants, not including the wives of Jacob's sons, were 66 persons. The sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two. All the persons of the house of Jacob, including Joseph and Jacob and Joseph's two sons, were 70. And then he sends Judah before him to Joseph to point out the way before him to Goshen, and they came to the land of Goshen. And Joseph, there we see something. Goshen was quite a distance from where Joseph was living in Pharaoh's palace. But though Joseph was such a big man, and though Joseph was around 40 years of age, he still had such a respect for his father that he goes out to meet him. He's a big man, he's 40 years old, but he does not fail to respect his father. This is the man whom God sends. This is the type of man whom God sends. Not one who begins to feel that he is so important that he no longer knows how to honor his father and mother. Do you know that you have to honor your father and mother all the days of your life? You don't have to obey them 
once you leave your home and set up your own home, then you have to live your own life, but you have to honor them till the end of your life. If you want to be the man whom God sends. He prepared his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck for a long time. And uh, Israel, of course, was very happy to meet Joseph. And Joseph said to his brothers, Now I'll go up and tell Pharaoh. And will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. And these men, my brothers, are shepherds. For they have been keepers of livestock. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have, and shall come about when Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? That you shall say, Your servants have been keepers of livestock, from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, that you may live in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is loathsome to the Egyptians. Do you see something there? The Egyptians loathed shepherds. For some reason, because the Egyptians were cultured, educated, refined, they dealt with agricultural, uh, agricultural work with the land. The, fa the shepherds who looked after livestock they felt were barbarians out in the jungles and they really had no respect for shepherds. And what we see here is Joseph telling these people, tell them the truth that you're shepherds, and I'll tell him that you're my brothers. Even if they loathe you, you're my brothers. My brothers are shepherds. My brothers are not big shots. My brothers are ordinary barbarians. You see something of Joseph's humility. When Pharaoh asks you, oh, you're Joseph's brothers, are you? What are we? We're just barbarians. He says, tell Pharaoh that. There's really so many things that we see in Joseph's character which is really stands out. And he says, you get the land of Goshen to live in because that, in, in a sense, it'll turn out for your good because that's a good land and the Egyptians won't want you anywhere near them. Uh, so he, he'll allot that land to you and that's a good land and you stay there. Well, that really struck me that Joseph was not ashamed to call these barbaric shepherds his brothers, even in the presence of Pharaoh. When Pharaoh asks you, what are you? Say, we are shepherds. And every shepherd is loathsome to the Egyptians. 